Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. So glad that you're able to join me this afternoon. It's a hot one today, isn't it? Boy! And um, I was telling the people at Mass this morning, if you were watching virtually, that the air conditioner has to uh, have a little retuning again because we have these people come out, but it's so temperamental because the system is not new. So just bear patience with us, especially the weekday masses. Hopefully by the weekend, it'll be fine. Always use, it's usually a part or something that uh, breaks or a belt or something like that. I don't know, but you know what I mean. It's always something. So we have good people and a good company working on our air conditioning, but just want to put in the back of our heads that that too uh, might have to be replaced down the line because they only last so long and uh, we have to be thinking about that. Well, anyway, that's for another day, right? We're talking about today and talking about the beauty and the glory of God in our life and how beautiful that is to know God, to love him and to serve him, not only in this world, but to be happy with him in the next. And the best way that we do that is the celebration of the sacraments, our prayer life and our love that we extend to people that we meet every day. Isn't that concise of what it's supposed to be? and how we're supposed to live our life, to love him, to know him, and to serve him in this world so that we could be happy with him in the next. And we do that by our prayer, our celebration of the sacraments, and the love that we share with everyone that we come into contact with. That's what it's all about. And that's the beauty and the joy of Catholicism and Christianity. And I'm so happy that you're filled with God's spirit, that God is breathing in you each and every day to allow his spirit to be exhaled by you and to reach everyone that you meet. That's a beauty and that's a gift. I wanna just give a couple shout outs to all of you, but in particular, I have a shout out going to Grace, Gabriella and Gavin who are watching and they're celebrating their daddy's birthday today. So, and his name is Brad. So I just want to wish you a happy birthday, Brad. And to you, Eileen, and to your lovely children. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Gabriella. Hi, Gavin. Nice to see all of you. And all of you who are watching there. And if you have a birthday, email me. I'll say hello to you. Hey, listen, you know me, I'm not shy. I'll uh, say hello to all people. So enjoy your day, guys and enjoy your daddy's birthday today. Well, you know, this coming Thursday is traditionally Corpus Christi. Now, I know in the United States, you know what happened. That day, the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, was moved or bumped to the closest Sunday for Corpus Christi. And the bishops of the United States did that, making sense, so that more people can be involved, pray, and celebrate that solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. It does make sense. It makes perfect sense when it's on a Sunday, more people gather than they do for weekday mass, right? But here at St. Mary's in historic Schweinsville, we're, we're a little traditional, I would think, and we bend toward the traditional way. Uh, why, why fix it if it's not broken, right? So usually, usually we celebrate Corpus Christi, the procession that is, on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, which would be tomorrow. But I think it's going to be raining tomorrow. So that's kind of not in our favor. So we can't have an, like an outdoor procession. But we're thinking about it. We're thinking if we can't do it on Thursday, which is tomorrow, we might be able to do it on Sunday. And if Sunday rains, then we're gonna think of another day. But I'll always keep in contact with you about what we're doing. So this year, because of social distancing and all of that, um, guess what I plan to do? Yay! I plan to get a truck and take the Blessed Sacrament and just go through neighborhoods. Would you like that? Take a truck, from one of our parishioners, thank you very much, and go through the neighborhood, and I'll tell you what neighborhood I'm going through. In fact, Sandy's gonna put their route 
in the bulletin on the feature page. So look at the bulletin, go to the website, look at the bulletin for this coming Sunday and see where I'm going to be. Where am I going to be visiting? It's like find Waldo. That's me. You know, find Father B. Where am I going to be going with Jesus? And then I could go through your neighborhoods and then I'll stop at certain streets and I'll give you a blessing, which is a benediction, right? And then I'll take the I'll take it on the road again. Jesus will be on the road with me. I will be with him. And we'll go to another neighborhood and we'll bless that neighborhood. How's that for Corpus Christi? So start making some signs. Welcome Jesus to our neighborhood. <laughs> and rose petals. You know how you throw rose petals to, to the Blessed Sacrament? That's wonderful. And when you have your rose petals, pray over them. In other words, you might have a special intention. Like this is for, uh, for grandmom's health. This is for Joey's test. This is for a new job. This is for the intentions of Father Bellapedi. Oh, thank you. You know, this is, this is for these intentions. And then when you throw them, they're thrown with prayer, right to the Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. So we're gonna decorate the truck a little bit. We're gonna put like a portable altar on the truck and a presider's chair. And we're gonna put the Blessed Sacrament there. And we're gonna be coming to your neighborhood, hopefully, hopefully to your neighborhood in the near future. So find out where we're going. Maybe you could take a walk over to that neighborhood if you're close by. But at least I thought that would be a nice thing because of this social distancing error and trying to do it on campus here. It, it's not going to work as effectively. And I thought to myself, maybe this year we should just go out into the neighborhood. What do you think? So that's my thoughts and my plans. And uh, thank God we have a wonderful staff here. Hey, listen, thank you for emailing me that. You know what? I've been receiving a lot of emails. Hey, Father Bella P, thank you very much for your masses uh, being videoed and for your afternoon reflections. Please tell your staff we said thank you very much. So you're welcome very much. You're welcome. They are wonderful. I told you this before and I'm going to tell you again. We are blessed here at St. Mary's. Number one, we're named after the Blessed Mother. Number two, we have a perpetual adoration chapel. Number three, we have a parochial school and a wonderful prep program, wonderful RCIA program, Legion of Mary, ministries, organizations, 23 acres, six buildings, but most importantly, it doesn't matter with that, the people. It's the people that make the parish, the living stones. We have great people here, and the people that work here are phenomenal. The office staff, unbelievable. So let me just give a little shout out to them. Sandy Olzinski, parish secretary, my administrative assistant. She's also the safe environment coordinator. She's also the chairwoman of the Christmas Bazaar and the craft show. She also is the choir director. She's also in charge of one of the music groups. She sits on the worship committee. She assists her husband at prep. He's a teacher, she's an assistant teacher at prep. It's unbelievable what Sandy does and she gets it all done. It's one of those people that you say, give something to a busy person, they'll get it done. Thanks Sandy, thanks for everything you do. Mary Beth O'Connor, Mary Beth O'Connor serves the parish as our business manager and the director of operations. Phenomenal job. She takes care of all the business and the man managerial aspects of the parish. Insurance, personnel, all of that. She takes care of the property and the buildings. She has to know all about the property and the buildings and meets with the contractors and those who are working on any area of our property to making sure that we're following code, that we have the proper licenses and insurance. That's a heavy load. She does that as well as taking care of all the employees and of course the school employees 
and taking care of that facility as well. <laughs> Some people say it's more than a full-time job. She does spend extra hours on the weekend as well. Kathy Wisniewski, bookkeeper and purchaser. Wow, talk about a person who is very diligent and good at her job is Kathy as well. She takes care of all of our accounts. We have about 30 accounts. She makes sure everything is order and everything is processed and all the procedures are up to code for the archdiocese and for what we're supposed to be doing as a entity that takes care, takes in money. Just because we're a church, we have to follow the law as well. She does a phenomenal job in doing that. She's also the purchaser. She, we have to go through her to purchase things. Well, why? Because, you know, we just can't ask anybody to purchase. We look to a person who's going to be looking at the right deals, getting the right price, searching around, making sure that this is the right deal and following the better business, you know, viewer. Just because we want to make sure this, this entity that we're buying from is okay. So Kathy Wisniewski, bookkeeper and purchaser. I thank Mary Godsword. Mary Godsword is the coordinator of religious education. Most of you probably think that it's she's the principal of prep, and she is. She coordinates the children who are going to our night school and the faculty and the staff that take care of the Monday night and Tuesday night night school and to make sure the sacraments are um, handled correctly and catechized, not only for prep, but because she's the coordinator of religious education, she also speaks to the school and to Deacon Don for RCIA. See, she's the coordinator of religious education, which means she has a big umbrella. It's not just prep. No, she takes care of prep. She is the principal of prep, absolutely for those two nights at night school, and the faculty and the staff, absolutely, and the curriculum, absolutely. But she also coordinates the sacraments for prep, for the day school, and for our CIA. So she's the one who coordinates all that with those entities. You know, penance, first communion, confirmation, and those who are coming into full communion in the church. She's also, she also is the coordinator of religious groups or prayer groups or entities, like she, like the prayer groups or Oasis or the Bible Timeline, all of those entities. She also coordinates the May procession, Corpus Christi procession as well, because she coordinates religious entities within the parish. She does a great job. How grateful I am to Susan Rosowitz. Susan Rosowitz serves on our staff more than an administrative assistant. She's also our graphic designer. What parish in this archdiocese has a graphic designer? St. Mary's. We do, and we're blessed with her. You know Susan. She's the sweet, lovable lady who works in our office center. But you'll see her. She takes care of the IT as well. So during, uh, during the taping of the masses or the live streaming, it's Susan behind the camera, as well as Joe Peterlin. But Joe now is back to work. Yay! He's back to work. How grateful we were for you, Joe. You were amazing for us. How lovely. You and Susan did a great job. And now Susan's behind the camera. In fact, she's behind the camera right now <laughs> with her smile and her love that she gives to everybody. But uh, Susan takes care of all the graphic designs. Anything that you see that we put out and you might say, oh, this is very pretty. Well, thanks Susan Rodowitz. When you look at the, some of the booklets that we put out, whether for Mardi Gras or for ads for the school or for ads for the uh, fences outside or the announcements that we do for the uh, posters outside on the, the fences. That's all Susan Ronsowitz. Susan was the one who also designed all of those signs around the campus. You know those 17 
18, now we have 19. We just added two more signs. 19 signs, that was all Susan Rodswitz. She, she was uh, the coordinator, but she had a team. I was on her team. So she had a team of people. Do you know it took us one full year to do those signs? The right color, the right material, the right substance, uh, the right company, the right lettering. I mean, it was a year of a labor of love. We never rushed it. It was Susan, Susan Rodowitz who did all that. She's also the chairwoman of the St. Mary Feast. Remember when she did the beginning when we had St. Mary Day and then we moved it into what is St. Mary Feast? Only to, you know, feast is a more of a religious kind of a connotation. And remember, it was under Susan's, Susan's guidance that we went to a two day celebration. We have a uh, a Saturday evening celebration, and then we have a Sunday celebration. That's Susan Rosowitz with her whole staff, all her volunteers, that is. You know, she's the one who does that. She does all the programming for that. She assists uh, Sandy Olszewski with the craft show and the Christmas Bazaar. You know, when we celebrate the sacraments, it was Susan who does the certificates and does all the programming. It's wonderful to have a person like her on staff. She's more than just an administrative assistant. She goes beyond, and there's a lot of things that she has done behind the scenes for us, and we're, we're very, very grateful. The Mardi Gras, for instance. Do you know, did you ever see the Mardi Gras book? Unbelievable. Susan Rodowitz. So it's all beautifully done, and her team, and there's a lot of people that assist her, and a lot of people that coordinate that. It takes an entire village. Well, anyway, Susan Rodswitz. You know who also helps us? Donna Forsythe. She still helps us. You know, she used to, uh, well, Susan really uh, took her job when um, Donna retired. And, uh, but Donna still comes back <laughs> because Donna just loves it here. And I don't know if she's here. Yeah, she's here today. She's here today, she's doing odds and ends. I don't know, we just, we have, we always have odds and ends we have to do. So Donna Forsythe is here doing a lot of that. She assists Kathy Wisniewski and she assists Mary Beth O'Connor in the business office. Then, you know, how can I not, how can I ever forget Peggy? Peggy Hinson, who's on our staff as the head sacristan. The amount of work that's involved in just taking care of the church, the sacristy work, setting up for masses, not only masses, but now even during this pandemic, the confession. How about also not only the masses, but the flowers to make sure everything looks right for each liturgical season. How about coordinating cleaners? How about getting all that right? How about talking to the air condition guy how about talking to the people who are contracted in the church? I know Mary Beth takes care of that and she does a great job. They probably first see Peggy before they get to Mary Beth and they have a conversation because Peggy practically lives in the church more than I do and she takes care of all that. A sacristan is priceless. And Peggy also have, has her helpers who helps her with different things. The May procession cart, the Corpus Christi cart. I know that Mary Farrow helps her a lot in that area. There's a lot of people that help her. Uh, Peggy's also the president of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. You know, isn't that unbelievable, that ministry? We partnered with the St. Vincent de Paul Society. I'll talk to you later about what, what's the difference be between partnership and a parish ministry, but that's for another day. But can you see, we have Sandy, Mary Beth, Kathy, Mary God's Word, Susan Rodsowitz, Donna Forsythe, Peggy Hinson, all over in this office building. Remember I told you this used to be a convent? There's so much work to do that we're never bored. Ask any of these ladies, are you bored? I didn't even mention, I didn't even mention Deacon Don, who coordinates RCIA and who is part of the men's Bible reflection and the spiritual director of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. 
That's Deacon Don. He also preaches once a month, takes his turn for a baptism, and goes out on communion calls, and is at the celebration of Mass, and the other liturgical ceremonies that we have. Unbelievable. And how about the lay people that head up all those groups that we have during the week in the annex? All those people I'm blessed to have here. I didn't even get into the school, did I? The principal and the administrative assistant, Beth Pastorius, I didn't even go in there. Suzette Moyer, the director of enrollment and retention. Wow, it takes a village. And then you have me. That's how I'm blessed. I'm blessed to like work with these people. I'm blessed to work with these people. They've enriched my priesthood by the witness of their faith and how they love doing what they do. They come to work and they say to me, I love it here. I love doing this. This is God's work. So why am I telling you all this? Well, because you, you email me and you tell me to thank the staff. I just want you to know who the staff is. <laughs> it's not one person. Just in this building, whoop, the seven of them. And we have the annex building and we have the school. I didn't go into CYO and explain to you all how that runs. It takes a village. And I'm so grateful for you, your love for this parish. You surround it with love, your kindness. The more love and kindness we receive, the more we want to do. That's why we love love. Give us love and we'll do even more. Isn't that what people say? You know, just encourage and we'll do even more because we're doing it for the love of God and his people. So there are my thoughts for you today. Just wanted to give you a sprinkling of, you know, a little bit more about the love of St. Mary Parish. So if you have a birthday you're celebrating, like uh, Gabriella and Gracie and Gavin's daddy and... Um, Shout out to them, Eileen and Brad are the mom and dad, the Turners. And uh, of course, if you have anybody that you're celebrating something, I would love to say it here on camera. And also I wanted to tell you about Corpus Christi. Tomorrow is the traditional Corpus Christi day, but it might be rainy. Um, so, but Sunday is Corpus Christi and we'll see how that all goes. But how about that idea of getting on a truck and bringing the Blessed Sacrament to neighborhoods? Why not, right? Talk about evangelizing. I have to make sure that I'm out there as well as inside the church, because that's where the people are, even if they don't practice their faith. I think, don't you think it's a good idea to bring it out to them? And then I wanted to talk to you about the love that this office staff, we're here to serve, serve the people that belong to this parish. I want to just give you a little glimpse of who they are and what their jobs are. But thanks everybody. Be careful out there. It's a very warm day. Stay in, have your iced tea, and just mellow out with the rosary or a prayer book. God bless you.